Hello Ben, my name is David Collins, I'm from Johannesburg in South Africa. I received an email this morning uh, around the CEO position. So I'm going to go through uh, your questionnaire um, on SurveyMonkey. Um, I just find it's a lot more efficient to send you a video. So my first name is David, my last name is Collins, my email address is david at davidcollins.co.za. Um, my telephone number is plus two seven eight three two double eight zero three zero nine. Um, I'm currently I own a, a treatment centre in Johannesburg, and I'm the founder of the Ubuntu Addiction Community Trust, which uh, houses the Academy of Coaching and Training. And I've developed recovery coaching here to assist people in moving from a culture of addiction to a culture of recovery. So I've uh, developed a program that uh, uses coaching to enhance treatment outcomes. Please provide a link to your LinkedIn profile. I will do that. Experience of coaching. What has been your experience of coaching in the past? Okay, I've been coaching for 10 years full time. I spent uh, 20 years in corporate, in banking, working in IT, in IT support. Um, so I would run around and help people fix their computers. And then uh, 10 years ago, I left and I coached, I've been coaching full time since then. I was trained in the coactive coaching model and then I went off and did a master's in business and executive coaching in the Pitts Business School where I then uh, developed my own model, uh, uh, the recovery coaching model, which uh, was part of my uh, thesis, which I never completed, the research I never completed. And the reason I didn't complete it is that uh, I didn't like the way that the academic program was structured in the sense that I'd spend six months doing a thesis that three people would read that wouldn't really understand what I was doing because I was pioneering coaching in the addiction world. Um, I then went on to create a, a school, a coaching school, uh, so we registered with the IMCSA, which is a local professional body, and uh, with the International Coaching Register, our coaching program is uh, ISO 17024 compliant, which means it's compliant in uh, Europe and uh, so that, that that bureaucracy and paperwork uh, brought credibility and uh, it's also been a lot of experience which I will be which I believe will add value to what the role is. Um, have you been coached all the time? Uh, I, I still continue to be coached and supervised. Have you coached others professionally? Yes, I've been coaching full time. I must have a, a, a thousands of hours coaching, individual coaching one-on-one -on -one and group coaching, working with groups and communities uh, with a coaching uh, model to see, to, to get the solution to emerge from teams. So uh, that's been uh, very beneficial. Uh, do you, I currently have a coach? Yes, I do. Please share your thoughts about the coaching professional, its value proposition, its future, its challenges. So uh, coaching, I believe, is going to be more uh, moving towards the positive psychology framework. We're going to be under pressure to get professionalized from our various professional bodies uh, in the medical industry. Um, so there's going to become more and more regulation. Uh, around coaching, uh, I believe, as a professional, as a profession. And uh, the, its value proposition is it dramatically reduces uh, uh, the costs of emotionally unwell people or dysfunctional people. So coaching really, you really get a return on investment by a uh, coach going in there and empowering individuals to take personal responsibility for themselves, their feelings, their thinking, their thoughts, their minds. And um, it's we're really moving from a wound-based psychology to a solution-based positive, uh, not positive psychology in the sense of like, yeah, let's all be happy together, but uh, how can we uh, have difficult conversations in a constructive way? How can we uh, build teams to work together? How can we handle the diversity challenges that we have in the workplace? How can we uh, adjust to an ever-changing world as technology becomes more and more um, connected as individuals? How do we uh, you know, achieve that and adjust to the, the dramatic changes that are happening in, in our environment uh, using technology. Uh, the world is really going to be changing very, very fast and it's just getting faster and faster. 
50% of the world workforce are millennials and which have grown up uh, using technology so the platforms and the way that people communicate and work is changing ever so fast and uh, coaching assists leaders who are responsible for developing culture in, um, in uh, as a tool to help leaders lead and to guide people. Um, please share your thoughts about the coaching profession. I think we've done that. How many years of experience have you had as a COO, GM or CEO? So I'm really entrepreneurial like yourself. I arrived in Job Johannesburg with one man 30 in my pocket, which is about uh, 15 American cents. And I started washing dishes and I've really gone out and uh, built a hell of a lot of things. Um, so I have been very entrepreneurial in that sense. Uh, that might be a challenge uh, going forward because maybe me and you are cut from the similar cloth, same cloth. Um, but uh, you know, I've worked with a lot of CEOs and uh, in the corporate space, so when I went coaching full time, I, I basically focused on the banking environment and the banking sector and uh, working with COOs and CEOs and working at the C suite level. Um, and then doing a lot of work with uh, NGOs as well. What's your experience in online marketing, digital publishing? Do you think this is relevant to the role on offer? Absolutely, definitely. I've got a whole lot of ideas around uh, what we would do and where we would take uh, your organization going forward. Uh, but I'm not going to be telling you that until I get to the second stage if possible. But I mean, just using this medium to uh, communicate uh, is far more efficient and um, that's how you're going to get clients and as the world becomes more and more diverse and connected through uh, cyberspace uh, the skill sets are going to have to to change and adjust leadership outline your journey into leadership roles starting from your first experience of being responsible for leading others well, the first time I, I led, I was in the Boy Scouts. I was 12 years old and I had a, a patrol. And we were called the Kudu Patrol. And uh, when I was uh, selected as the patrol leader, I was really surprised that uh, I was given the, the role. And what got me the role was uh, my enthusiasm. So I've always been enthusiastic about something. When I'm enthusiastic about something, I become a natural leader. And. Uh, yeah, and uh, as, as running startups and uh, building businesses, people tend to follow me. So I've always wondered if it's something that I was born with and it's just part of my personality or if it was something that uh, I've developed. And, um, the, the, and can you teach other people to be leaders? And I'm, 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 I'm still not sure about that, but I know that I am seen as a leader and I know that uh, uh, I'm certainly a leader in my industry and my profession, and uh, yeah, so that's uh, like I mean the challenges of being a leader. I mean one of the hardest things I find is uh, you know, having to cut costs and reduce costs and to let people go and confrontation around that sort of thing. Um, yeah, so anyway, I'm a natural leader. Uh, What's the largest team you've led? Uh, well, at the moment, uh, our coaching school has uh, 593 students. Uh, so that's the biggest organization I've created so far. Um, but I see that uh, growing more than more. Um, yeah. What's the greatest challenge in your largest team? So getting people aligned to the strategy and getting people to follow in a direction and to to uh, believe in themselves. Um, the, the, how do we get people to co-collaborate and uh, get aligned in the strategy and going forward? Um, and whenever there's a change, a lot of people have doubt in their, their capabilities and where we're going. So it's about hand-holding and walking people through that change process. Which is, which is a, a natural thing for all organizations that uh, struggle. My greatest achievements in my largest team is, uh, well, it's still, it's ongoing uh, as we, we kind of grow and uh, I'm, I'm constantly amazed at uh, how well we're doing with what little we've got. So really using our resources very wisely to move forward and to uh, 
uh, achieve our strategy, our goal is to uh, cure the world of addiction by training, empowering and treating individuals and uh, our first target is to train a thousand coaches at a thousand dollars a coach and um, we're going ahead and forging ahead even though we haven't got the money at the moment. Uh, I've got everything in a Section 18A trust which is a uh, non-profit which uh, I think in the States is called a 501 uh, tax deductible donation and uh, if we could get people to donate to the MPO uh, we would really thrive as a school um, but we carry on doing this anyway in spite of getting the, the, the money or not to the resources just because we're so passionate about it it's called Kokorozashi and Kokorozashi is Japanese for soul's purpose um, where am I going here? What's your greatest challenges? You know, what's your greatest achievement in any of your achievements? What were your greatest achievements? You know, I change people's lives. People uh, often come in here broken and not being able to believe in themselves. And uh, what our work does is it teaches people how to take their trauma of their past and to turn that into an asset. And once they've realized that, they, then they, they become empowered. They go off and uh, achieve amazing things in communities and uh, in the workplace environment. And I'm, I'm continuously blown away by how, with a little bit of education, how far people can go and, um, and uh, achieve amazing things. They just need somebody to believe in, believe in them. And I'm hoping you're starting to believe in me. Thank you. Uh, how, how do you use a Malay day-to-day -day monitoring of performance to formal accounting reports and other data? Okay, so the, the challenge in, uh, that, I, that I face in any kind of business is getting the data back from the bureaucracy to, to make the decisions. And uh, so there's the, all the things like cash flow and uh, all, all, all those sorts of challenges. But once you get the data in your hand and you can make uh, decisions and uh, you know, uh, can make very clear, quick decisions it's about building the right team and having the right resources in place and uh, systems in place to give you the information um, and uh, the follow-up of, of that um, and it's the same in any small business as it is in any big business um, so it's about getting the right people in the right roles at the right level uh, with the right systems and tools to be able to and to be empowered to be able to uh, deliver the information that is uh, needed and then to act on that information with agility and nimbleness and to make uh, decisions quickly and to move forward. So when it comes to, for example, in my case, curing the world of addiction by empowering personal responsibility, that becomes the vision and uh, the values of the organization, um, to, sorry, the vision and the action of the organization to measure whether we're on, on target. So if ever we get confused, let's go back to that, get focused and move forward. Um, how do you know what's going on from day to day? So uh, email is a nightmare. People get swamped by email and overwhelmed. And uh, so there need to be other platforms. And that's all part of my plan, uh, how, how to do that. Um, because of my IT background, and my understanding of IT and how people work, uh, the technology is here to do that and to do that very quickly and efficiently. Um, how do you monitor sales, profits and cash flow? Well, that all depends on uh, the amount of data that people put back into the, to the reports to give you the information. So you need people out there to update the info and uh, to make sure that the reports are accurate and then to move forward from there. Me personally, I've got such a grip of the business that I generally know anyway. So where, where, where I am at any time in my business and what's going on and there's no reason why you can't do the same thing on a global scale. I mean, my school's already in uh, Johannesburg in South Africa, in Australia and in the UK. And um, get to feel and smell the business. You get to understand that sort of stuff. Um, 
We read a lot about how lousy corporate culture is, eventually leads to lousy results, damaged customers, devastated shareholders and ruined brands. How would you prevent that? Well, I don't know if I'd be able to prevent it, but you can certainly use uh, coaching to create uh, create an organizational culture where every individual is empowered and has an understanding of, of their brand and how they relate to their brands. Often that uh, organizations, the employees are so removed from the brand and its values that uh, there's a disconnect and that's how people get into trouble. Um, I'm always talking about a culture of addiction which is about blame, justification, denial and, um, and minimization, <laughs> maximization, blaming. Uh, it's in a crisis, chaos and conflict where people are overwhelmed and then in a culture of recovery it's uh, created with a kind of spiritual principles and people learn how to communicate from a place of doing the right thing. So I develop uh, four intelligences. Uh, there's IQ, which is technical ability. There's emotional intelligence, which is, do you have the ability to read your emotions, understand your emotions and somebody else's emotions? Are you able to build relationships with those people? Spiritual intelligence about doing the right thing. Uh, for the right reason, the right morals, and then PQ is political intelligence, where you you have the ability to align with people, build relationships for a common purpose and a common goal. So, for example, here in South Africa, uh, and if you, um, we uh, as a country really needed to unite, to work together, to uh, recover from the, the the legacy of apartheid and. Uh, and so I've just naturally got a lot of experience around that. So how do you build relationships with people with different diversity backgrounds and, uh, and how do we move forward, forward from there? Um, cool, I'm really speaking fast. Eh? <laughs> I hope you're getting this. I hope you watch this, you take the time. We've provided some information on our growth history today. Yeah, I saw that. Was it 34% growth per annum? That's, that's some serious growth. It'll be interesting to see how that's going to be maintained and sustained. Uh, I think what's going to happen is it's going to be dips and troughs, but it's to kind of main a, maintain a steady growth that is uh, realistic um, around that. Do you think you can not only maintain it, but improve our rate of growth while increasing both team morale and value delivery? How? Well, I'm not going to tell you how right now, but I certainly believe that I can do that. Um, in a very efficient way, and that would be using uh, technology as an enabler. Um, I'd love to tell you how, actually, but not yet. What has your research told you about our enterprise? Um, I've seen the name, I've seen the brand. Uh, personally, when I see it, I'm, I've seen lots of uh, different uh, coaching organizations or professional bodies out there. Um, so there's always a trigger inside me that goes, oh, they're the competition, uh, we can do so much better. Um, but uh, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd be curious to see how we could uh, possibly work together. Uh, what have you managed to discover about me, Ben Croft? Uh, not yet, not much yet. I got an email, I went out uh, for lunch now, I went and looked at your LinkedIn profile, I've sent you an invitation request. Um, yeah, so let, let's let's see where we go from there. What I did like though about reading through the the, the, the job proposal was uh, family values uh, that came up a lot for me, um, and how important that is, uh, and uh, the the bitchiness of things, um, having direct courageous conversations with people, talking behind people's backs, and that gossip is a killer. Um, so me working in the addiction world and uh, come across a lot of dysfunctional families and organizations and uh, the way that you change that dysfunction is you get people to have robust conversations which based around spiritual principles, honesty, open-mindedness, willingness, faith, trust, acceptance, courage, uh, forgiveness and a whole lot of uh, other pr principles. And so that's kind of how I go here. Um, competitors, who do you see uh, direct competitors? Uh, the ICF, um, International Coaching Federation, which I'm sure you, you know about. Uh, they, um, 
personally I think that's a bit odd. My coaching school that I went to, Coach Training Institute, when I did the certification there, I was automatically made a member of ICF, but it added no value, so I dropped out after the first year. Corporate South Africa want a brand to to attach to um, the, the the I think universities um, we're going to start uh, adding pressure um, and uh, that's the, and uh, we need to take on the education system I think that uh, a lot of students going to university and getting student loans and getting into student debts I think that models uh, under pressure. And I, I certainly want to take that on. Uh, the, the academic uh, barriers to entry are breaking down because of technology and the way the classrooms and learning environments are created. And um, I think they should rather, you know, see us as the competition and they, they're, they're going to rather be threatened by uh, organizations uh, like yourselves. Um, and that's all about bringing in strength of brand and robustness around the uh, training and certification process and how we actually do that. Uh, right, what do you see their strengths relative to us? Uh, institutional knowledge, um, institutional, uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for? They've been around a while, so people think that, oh well, if you go to Harvard or Stanford or MIT, the, the institutional name of the organization carries a uh, value, but I think that that's going to be uh, come under more and more pressure. And uh, I think organizations uh, like ourselves or yourself um, have a real opportunity there. What do you see, the, see as their weakness relative to us? Uh, they are stuck up, grandiose, uh, caught up in bureaucracy, they don't have the agility that uh, we can create with technology, for example, um, how I'm talking to you now directly, I'm creating a video, I'm going to post it on YouTube, I'm going to upload it and hopefully you'll get to it directly. Uh, professional values, integrity, honesty, willingness, uh, can-do attitude, uh, it can be done. Uh, what matters to you most about the way you've carried out your past leadership and executive roles? Authenticity. For me, I've got to show up as me. I can't be somebody that I'm not. You know, I am who I am. I've got my assets and I've got my liabilities. And, um, you know, uh, I, I do, do have my personal challenges and my blind spots. I'm willing to sit down and look at them and contemplate them to kind of meditate on them imagine what my life would be without them uh yeah why uh, why those particular values authenticity and honesty are just so kind of so much easier to live like that to be, just be kind of be clear you know i don't have to carry baggage i've had uh, i've had um I've had my challenges in my past and whenever, uh, you know, honesty has always kind of got me through and uh, in, in certain, you need to build trust and rapport with uh, individuals and other organizations that you work with. So if I can't build trust and, uh, you know, uh, amongst uh, people that I lead and organizations that I serve, then uh, there's no point really in kind of doing this. Like, well, I mean, why? I mean, let's kind of work together, and if we can't work together, well, let's let's be respectful and move on. Um, don't want to carry the baggage, and I've got more important things to do. Like, uh, you know, time is important to me. Like, you know, being with my kids, or going to the movies, or just kind of having fun in life. Uh, can you share an instance where your values were put under pressure? What happened? Well, working in the addiction world and um, in the treatment world and working with people's lives, uh, there are a lot of, uh, out over here in South Africa, I'm running a public benefit organization, which, uh, which um, I'm in competition with uh, you know, psychiatric hospitals and uh, other kind of mental institutions. And there's a real uh, business case to get people into treatment when they don't necessarily need treatment. And uh, I feel really opposed to that. So I really changed the treatment model here in this facility because 
You know, 10 years ago, I was really tired of us taking money off families uh, when their loved ones didn't want to get well. So the family was kind of desperate and their loved ones didn't get want to get well and people would uh, drop off their loved ones here with us and it was our job to try and break their denial and that, but they, they just weren't ready. And uh, the treatment model was abusive to the families. Um, and I have a real strong uh, problem with that. Uh, there's an opioid epidemic epidemic in the, the states at the moment which has been caused by uh, a systemic problem where, where where there's a lot of kind of pharmaceutical companies that make profit out of people's uh, misery and, uh, and, and, I'm, and I'm really not judging that in a, in a way that um, you know I, I really understand that it, it's a systemic problem that we all need to work together so we need to take a systemic perspective on it all everyone needs to discover what their role is and we all need to unite and move into a common direction um, so yeah that's that's <laughs> that's a, a challenge where am I on this fields of business let's see what fields of business excite you the most this is it Technology, coaching, teaching, uh, empowering personal responsibility. That's, that's uh, getting organizations to thrive, getting teams to work together. You know, I love that stuff. Uh, why do you think that is? It just feels great. Success is, it's, uh, it's addictive. Yeah, it's really, really nice. And, um, the shadow side of it is I can get really kind of obsessed and uh, you know, single-minded around that sort of stuff. Uh, what have you managed to accomplish in each of those to date? Uh, I'm not sure. Well, I've built, built a rehab, I've built an IT company, I've built a coaching school. Um, and uh, when I'm passionate about something, I go, I go for it. And, uh, I'm getting kind of curious and passionate about this. Uh, how do you do that? It's part of my kokorozashi. It's part of what I feel my soul's purpose is. And, uh, and I want to kind of leave a, a legacy for my, for my kids where they kind of go, shit, you know what? My dad was a good bloke. He really made a difference in the world. And, uh, and I want to be respected by my, my peers and other people, uh, other coaches out there. And uh, I'd like the world to know, you know, David really made a difference. Really made a difference with a global problem. Yeah. Um, what part? What part did luck or timing or serendipity play in your success? Just getting this email this morning was serendipitous. Um, the emails normally go into a spam folder, and I found this, and I clicked it, and then I read it out of curiosity, and uh, you know I have a lot of faith in that kind of area. You know, sometimes uh, things just kind of come together for the most uh, serendipitous, and it's kind of almost spooky. In the beginning, I didn't trust it, but now I, I trust it more and more, and I have a whole lot of faith around that. On a scale of one, 1 to 100, how excited are you about the prospect of taking up this role? I'm excited. I'm really excited. But I've got a whole lot of saboteurs in my head saying, so why would they want somebody from Africa? Why would they, you know, who do I think I am? Uh, what, you know, but uh, I'd, I'd love it. And um, you know, if I got to the second stage or something, my anxiety would most probably rise and then I'd, I'd most probably you know, have some kind of uh, behavior that would sabotage it. So, but, uh, but I'm pretty keen. I mean, you guys, I mean, if you're talking like 24,000 people, that's, uh, there's a business model that we can tap in straight away there. And uh, I'd love to be able to do it. And what I understand is that you'd like to be the, the chairman. Well, you'll, you'll, you'd take on the chairman and you've got two other directors there. So it's actually a very small organization. So it'll be a bit like Nike. So how can you take a brand and outsource that, uh, use that brand to leverage uh, business and uh, sales and marketing and um, you know, take over the world? Um, what else should I have asked you? Um, that's such a manipulative question. Um, 
What else should I have asked you? I'm not sure. I'm really not sure. I mean, you could have asked me about my personal life. I mean, I've got uh, I've got three ex-wives <laughs> and uh, four children, and uh, and uh, I say that not in a in a victimy way. I say that in a I've got very successful relationships. So so uh, as I've kind of gotten divorced and uh, our relationships didn't work out and both partners needed to, to move on, we've been able to maintain mature relationships where we can all get on uh, uh, as, as family and uh, all, all the kids get on together and <laughs> the ex-wives even get on together and uh, we can all focus on the common purpose of uh, you know, bringing up our children. And, um, and uh, I think that brings a lot of emotional uh, maturity and it's thanks to the work that I've done and uh, the willingness to, to make things happen. What questions do you have for me, us? When are you going to call me? And uh, I hope you don't think that it was arrogant of me to not fill out the form and to, do, to, to kind of break the rules. Um, I just did it this way because it kind of works for me and I hope it works for you. I've been talking for uh, uh, you know, almost half an hour here um, and I hope that's uh, been efficient. Um, anyway, thank you very much for, for listening and uh, yeah, maybe, maybe watch this video, maybe not, but uh, whatever you're doing, uh, just make sure you keep doing good in the world. Thank you very much. Goodbye.